Liam O'Donnell was a man who had once lived a life of modest comfort in the small town of Bray, Ireland. However, those days have long passed. His life now was a monotony of hard labor and empty evenings, the warehouse job barely paying enough to keep the lights on. His evenings were spent pulling pints at the local pub, the few coins he earned adding little relief to his growing worries. His wife had left him years ago, and with no children to bring joy to his life, his days felt as cold and unforgiving as the Irish winter. One particularly frigid evening, as Liam trudged home after another exhausting shift at the pub, he noticed a young girl huddled on the steps of a closed shop. She was barely a teenager, her clothes too thin to shield her from the biting cold. Her eyes, wide and filled with sorrow, met his, and Liam saw in them a reflection of his own struggles. A desperate loneliness, an aching emptiness. Without a second thought, Liam crouched down beside her. Though his own pockets were nearly empty, he felt a pull to help her. He reached into his pocket, pulling out the last $100 he had earned that night. It was money he desperately needed, money that could have gone toward a meal or a bill. But in that moment, the girl's need seemed greater than his own. Here, he said softly, pressing the bills in her cold hands. Find yourself a warm place to stay tonight and get something to eat. Don't lose hope. The girl looked at him, her eyes wide with a mix of gratitude and disbelief. Thank you, sir, she whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know how to repay you. Liam smiled gently. You don't need to. Just take care of yourself. That night, as Liam lay in bed, he couldn't stop thinking about the girl. He wondered if she had found a safe place to stay, if she was warm and fed. The $100 he had given her was a small fortune to him, especially considering his precarious financial situation. But despite the pangs of hunger gnawing at him and the looming bills, he felt a sense of fulfillment, a reminder that even in his own struggles, he still had the capacity for kindness. The next morning, Liam arrived at the warehouse, his mind still occupied by thoughts of the girl. But as he stepped inside, he noticed an unusual hush among the workers. His supervisor, Mr. Byrne, gathered everyone for an impromptu meeting. The news was grim. The warehouse was closing down at the end of the month. All of them would be out of a job. The announcement hit Liam like a punch to the gut. His warehouse job had been the thin thread keeping him afloat, and now even though it was being cut. Desperation set in as he realized that his evening shifts at the pub would not be enough to cover his rent, let alone keep food on the table. Over the next few weeks, he searched tirelessly for another job, going from business to business, but his efforts were met with rejection at every turn. As the days turned into weeks, Liam's situation grew increasingly dire. There were nights when he went to bed hungry, the gnawing pain in his stomach a constant reminder of his desperate straits. He fell behind on his rent, and soon the inevitable happened. He was evicted from his small apartment. With nowhere else to go, he joined the ranks of the homeless, wandering the streets of Bray in search of shelter. The pub job provided just enough for Liam to eat once a day, but the nights were spent huddled in doorways or under bridges, trying to stay warm. His appearance began to reflect his dire situation. His clothes became worn and threadbare, his face gaunt and unshaven. He moved through the town like a ghost, invisible to most, his pride too wounded to accept the pity of the townsfolk who had once known him. Despite the overwhelming odds, Liam refused to give up. He continued to search for work, visiting job centers and scanning classifieds. Each rejection was a blow to his dwindling hope, but he pressed on, driven by the memory of the girl's gratitude and the belief that things could get better. One chilly evening, as Liam trudged through the streets, he noticed a luxurious black car parked nearby. The tinted window rolled down, and to his astonishment, he saw the girl he had helped weeks ago, smiling at him. Liam, she called out, her voice filled with warmth and gratitude. Liam approached the car, his heart pounding in his chest. The girl stepped out, her eyes widening in shock as she took in his disheveled appearance. What happened to you? She asked, her voice filled with concern. Liam sighed, the weight of his situation pressing down on him. I lost my job, he admitted. I've been struggling to get by. The girl's expression softened, 
and she quickly turned to the driver, a distinguished-looking man. Dad, this is Liam. He's the one who helped me that night. The man, John O'Connell, stepped out of the car and extended his hand to Liam. It's a pleasure to meet you, Liam. Aoife has told me all about your kindness. I understand you're in a tough spot right now. How about you come with us? We might be able to help. Overwhelmed by the sudden turn of events, Liam hesitated. But the warmth and sincerity in their eyes were impossible to ignore. He nodded, allowing himself a glimmer of hope. As they drove to the O'Connell residence, Liam couldn't help but feel a sense of surreal disbelief. The warmth of the car, the soft hum of the engine, and the kindness of these strangers were in stark contrast to the harsh reality he had been living. John O'Connell was a successful businessman, and he offered Liam a job in one of his companies. It wasn't just any job, it was a position with a fair wage and the promise of stability. Liam could hardly believe his luck. The job, though simple, provided him with a sense of purpose, a chance to rebuild his life. As the weeks passed, Liam began to regain his dignity and self-esteem. He was no longer just a homeless man wandering the streets, but a valued employee with a future. O'Connell treated him with respect and kindness and Liam's spirits began to lift. One evening, over a cup of tea with Aoife, Liam learned more about the night they had met. She recounted how she had been separated from her family during a trip to Bray. Her father's car had broken down, and in the chaos of the night, she had wandered off, lost, cold, and scared. When Liam found her, she had been feeling hopeless, sitting alone on the steps of that closed shop. After you gave me that money, I found a small cafe nearby, Aoife recalled. They took me in and let me stay until my parents found me. When they did, they were so grateful to you. They wanted to help you as a way of thanking you for your kindness. Liam was overwhelmed by her words. He had never expected anything in return for his act of kindness. And the idea that it had led to such a dramatic turn in his own life was both surreal and heartwarming. In the months that followed, Liam's life slowly began to turn around. He worked hard at his new job, saving enough money to rent a small, comfortable apartment. Though his life was far from the one he had once known, it was steady, and for the first time in a long time, he felt a sense of peace. Liam's story became one of quiet resilience and the unexpected rewards of selflessness. His simple act of kindness to a young girl had set off a chain of events that brought him back from the brink of despair. In the end, it wasn't wealth or comfort that restored Liam's life, but the enduring power of human connection. The reminder that even in the darkest times, a small act of kindness can light the way.